Hi, I'm Manny. And I'm Cheryl, and welcome to my sewing room. You know, I'm in the mood to do a kitchen makeover. Oh, no. Oh, don't worry. It's not going to cost you hardly anything. Well, that's what you always say. Well, let's take a look. As you can see, there's lots of things that you can make to brighten up your kitchen, such as pot holders, towels, bowl covers, toaster covers, placemats, mug rugs, aprons, you can even make new cafe curtains, and even a few table runners. So let's take a look at this idea. You could make a new toaster cover with a matching pot holder, a pretty little kitchen towel, and a really cute mug rug. In this video, we're going to do this pretty little toaster cover. The other items you saw will be in follow-up videos. This toaster cover should fit standard size uh, toasters. Make sure you measure your toaster. Measure the height, the width, and the depth, which would be the distance between the front and the back, and make any adjustments that you feel necessary. You're going to need 5 eighths of a yard of fabric for the outside, for the lining, and the cotton batting. Your checkerboard, you're going to need two different colors and one eighth of a yard each. Then for the top front, you're going to need a piece that is eight and a half by 12. Your checkerboard, you're going to need one color of each and you're going to need to cut a strip one and a half inch by 25 inch. For the back, you'll need 10 inch by 12 inch and for the gusset, you'll need a 7 inch wide by 26 inch and then you can you have the option of buying ready-made piping or making your own and you can purchase bias tape or you can use quilt binding if you prefer. When you're in the fabric store and you're not really sure what fabrics to pick out for this toaster cover find a piece of fabric that inspires you and this was mine. I loved all the colors in it and it had a very spring-like feel to it. So I created my applique pattern by cutting out this flower and some of the leaves. Then I went and selected these other colors that were in this fabric. And that's how I came up with the orange on the checkerboard and the piping and then the yellow for the top and side and then this was used in the back and also in the checkerboard with the orange. If you don't want to make a checkerboard yourself, sometimes you can find fabric that have that checkerboard feel. This was a fat quarter. I've had this for a while. I don't know if it's still available. And then here was another piece. So you can find things in there. If you don't feel like stitching a bunch of little squares together, then find other fabrics that could represent that checkerboard feel. To make the checkerboard bottom on the front of the toaster cover, take your two one and a half inch strips and bring front sides together. And then stitch a quarter inch seam down the full length. And then you're going to press it. You'll press the seam on the back side first, then unfold, and you're going to press the seam towards the darker fabric, whichever is your darker fabric. So you can see my seam is going towards this dark fabric. Then take your ruler, and you're going to cut them one and a half inches long. So you're going to cut 12 of these. So just go straight down and cut them. When you're done, you're going to line them up to where it's orange, yellow, yellow, orange. You're just going to keep going like that. And then after you've got all 12 lined up, then you're going to stitch them together using a 1 quarter inch seam. So you take the first two and bring front sides together and you want to match the seams. Make sure that the seam on top is going in the opposite direction than the seam on the bottom. Once you've got them all stitched, then give it a final pressing and it should look like this when you're done. This is my fabric for the top front. Now I chose to put an applique piece on there. 
If you want to do an applique design on it, click on the link in the upper right hand corner and it will take you to a video on how to do an applique of your choice. If not, use whatever fabric you want on the top portion. Now take your checkerboard piece and bring it face down. Now you're going to find that it's a little bit longer than your other fabric here. That's okay. Just center it on there, pin it down, and stitch one quarter inch along there. After stitching it on, then press this seam on the back side and then unfold and press on top. And I pressed the seam towards my checkerboard fabric. Now layer your fabrics. I have my inside fabric that's for my lining and I'm using just plain fabric because no one's going to see it. Then the cotton batting and then the front of the toaster cover. Now you're going to square this to 10 by 12 and so I'm putting my 10 inch line down here on the bottom and I'm centering my applique here because I want to cut this to 10 by 12. So go ahead and trim this side off. And then cut, move this up just a little bit more, this side off. Now take this corner up here, get this off, this corner up here and turn it. Now you're going to line up your ruler on the 10 inch line over here and the 12 inch line down here. So you're lining it up on the two previously cut edges. And then trim anything off that's sticking out. And trim this side. And there you go. Take your pieces for the back. So here's my lining and then the cotton batting and then my fabric for the back of the toaster cover is face up. So you want to layer all those together. Make sure everything is squared to 10 by 12. And then take something round. This is just a small round bowl that I have. And you're, you can either draw around it. You're going to trim off the corners or take your rotary cutter and cut around it or like I said draw a line and use scissors and then go over to the opposite corner and do the same thing. So when you're done it's going to look like this. It's got these two rounded edges on it. You also want to do the same thing to the front. Round those two corners. Then the next thing you're going to do is do what we call quilting stitches. I also call it top stitching. And I'm going to show you some patterns that you can use. You can either go straight across every few inches going down like this and then turning it and going like this. This is just a basic uh, lines going straight across. Or you can do at a diagonal going corner to corner same thing or if you have this serpentine stitch on there you can do the same thing going straight across straight down and you can also do it from the corner which is what I have done so here let me turn it the other way so you can see you would do this on your front piece and of course on your back piece and then take your gusset which is that long piece that goes over the top of the toaster. Go ahead and layer your fabrics and do the quilting stitches all over this also. Before you start doing the quilting stitches, in order to keep your fabric from shifting, you want to place pins all over this, all the way down on all of your pieces, the front, the back, and the gusset. 
When you're doing your quilting stitches, it's going to really be helpful to you if you use a walking presser foot on your sewing machine. This foot helps to prevent the fabric from shifting while you're doing the quilting stitches because you're going through a really thick layer. Also, it's very open in here and you can see exactly where you're stitching. You can purchase these at a sewing machine store. I purchased mine online. You can go on to Amazon, just enter the name of your sewing machine and all kinds of different options will come up. After you've done all of your quilting stitches on all of your pieces, take the gusset and have front side up. And then on each side of the gusset, you're going to stitch your piping on. Now remember, the piping is optional. You don't have to do this step. And you want to stitch it on 3 eighths of an inch from this edge here. Now I'm doing custom piping, but remember, you can buy piping ready-made in your fabric stores. If you are putting the piping on, I highly recommend you use your zipper foot, or it's also called a piping foot. It's basically half the width of a regular presser foot, and you can get in real close to your cording inside of that fabric when you're stitching it on. So it makes it so much easier. Here is my gusset right here, and you want it front side up. Then take one of the sides, whether it's the front or the back, it doesn't matter. And you're going to bring this one of the sides face down on top of the gusset. And you're going to start pinning it on. And if you're using the piping on your toaster cover, then I would definitely keep your zipper foot or piping foot on there. Now when you're pinning it around the corners, use extra pins and have them fairly close together because it'll make it much easier to keep the two pieces together. Then stitch 3 eighths of an inch from the raw edge in all the way around. You have just one more step to do and that is to finish the lower edge. Now you remember you have the option of using bias tape that you purchased to put around the lower edge or if you prefer to use quilt binding you can use that too. If you're using pre-bought bias tape I'm going to show you a really simple way to put this on. Take the end of your bias tape and fold it over oh maybe a half an inch and finger press it then take it and I would start on the back of your toaster cover wrap it around the edge and then pin your bias tape down and you would pin it all the way around then when you've, you're coming around to where the two ends are going to meet you would fold over the other end also and I just sort of finger press nail press it and as you're pinning it down you want to overlap the other end and then you can just stitch it on that way and then you would stitch up fairly close to this edge right in here but remember you want to make sure you catch the back side lower edge so make sure you have this wrapped around the lower edge evenly and correctly all the way around. Now on my toaster cover I'm going to use quilt binding so uh, you have that option of doing it. But the bias tape is the easiest so if you're a beginner I would do the bias tape. Well here it is. It's all done. I just think it's so pretty. Let me show you one more version of this. This is the same pattern, only in a different color. And instead of putting an applique flower up at the top, I put Sunbonnet Sue. So if you're interested in learning more about Sunbonnet Sue, click on the link that's in the upper right-hand corner. 
If you're interested in other toaster cover patterns, at the very end of this video there'll be a green screen and on that screen are links that you can connect to to learn how to do these toaster covers. I hope you try making this toaster cover. It's a start to brightening up your kitchen. Now, if you liked this video, click on that thumbs up button. Also, click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then click on that red button down there in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to enter your email address and click on the little bell so you receive future email notifications about my latest video. I'm Cheryl and this is Manny. So glad you came to my sewing room. See you next time and happy sewing!